today I want to share with you one of my favorite, favorite, favorite fall jams. Plum with apple and vanilla and star anise. It might sound like a crazy combination, but this duo sings and it is so fantastic. It's one of those jams when you taste it, you can't place the spices. It doesn't necessarily taste like vanilla. It certainly doesn't taste like star anise, but the, the spice complements those fruits in a way that just makes the fruit taste fruitier and really delicious. So this is a two-day jam, but there's not a lot of work. You have to do a little bit of prep up front, and then most of the work is done in the refrigerator overnight. The second day, you go ahead and just can it up. So I'm gonna show you the process, and like always, my recipes are just below the video. If you click show more, you'll see the whole recipe written out. Now, anytime you use apples in a jam, you want to make sure you have some sort of acid to keep them from browning. So I'm going to go ahead and juice my lemon first and put that into a bowl. Then I'm going to put my chopped apples into the bowl and just continue to toss them. That way they'll stay nice and bright white and the color of the jam then will be imparted by the plum. So you won't get this kind of grayish brown color that you would if the apples oxidized. So there's a couple considerations when choosing apple varieties. You want to cook with apples that either disintegrate <laughs> or hold their shape depending on what you're making. If you're making an applesauce, some of the best old fashioned varieties just turn into pulp, which is really what you're after. But if you're making a jam, you want apples that are gonna stay crisp and maintain their shape. So I am using Honeycrisp for this recipe. It's one of my favorite apples um, for jams because they actually, true to their name, stay crisp, they're tart, they hold their shape. Uh, they're just really, really lovely in jams. So continue peeling and cutting your apples. And then we're just gonna do the same. I'm gonna rinse the plums and just take the pit out and have them. I don't wanna make you all jealous, but a subscriber by the name of Owen made this knife for me and I love it. So thank you, Owen. I think of you every time I use it and I'm, I'm truly blessed. I know my brother says that he has the best subscribers. But I think I do, so thank you. For those of you who are inclined to experiment, you can keep your apple cores and peels and make apple scrap vinegar. And there's tons of websites online that give you um, the how-to. So another fun little thing to do with food scraps. Okay, so my apples are peeled. They're all tossed in the lemon juice. This really is one of the more beautiful jams. Um, because of the color, the dark purple skin imparts this beautiful like jewel pink color and the apples become really translucent. And so there's this kind of like pale pink ribbons of apple in this beautiful liquid. I'm going to flavor this with vanilla. So for those of you who've never used vanilla beans, you just pierce the vanilla bean, cut through it, not all the way through preferably, just enough that you can butterfly it and open it up. Take the back of your knife, good handle on it, and run it down the vanilla bean and just scrape out all of those seeds. And you'll get these beautiful, there's a picture, uh, beautiful kind of vanilla-y goo. Wipe all of that off your knife. And just put the pot and everything in the bowl. We're going to um, fish the pot out later, but it will impart a really nice vanilla flavor. Take our one star anise, throw in, and I've added a pinch of salt. I like to salt my jam just a tiny bit because it takes that sugar and rounds it out just a little bit. It's not even discernibly salty, but it just does alchemic goodness for your jams. Add your sugar. 
And I'm gonna toss all of this together. We're gonna let it, let it sit on the counter for an hour and macerate. And what that means is the sugar is going to pull out the liquid, the juice, inside the plums and inside the apple, and it's all gonna liquefy. After an hour, we'll take the whole mixture and put it into our jam pan and bring it up just to a simmer. That's gonna liquefy any remaining sugar crystals. And then we're gonna cool it in the refrigerator overnight. And what the overnight maceration does is it takes the, it pulls the juice out of the fruit and exchanges that liquid with the sugar syrup. So in essence, you're basically candying the fruit but you're doing it in a cold environment. So if you were to do it on the stove, you'd be cooking the fruit at the same time, which is what most jam recipes call for. This particular technique has you do a lot of the candying in the fridge. So what that does is it preserves the freshness of the fruit without having that overcooked flavor. And it is far worth it. I know it's a two day, two-day process, but this whole process took me about 20 minutes, and then um, the jamming will probably take another 20, 30 minutes total, and that's tomorrow. So it's really not a big deal. All right, so it's been an hour, and our jam has macerated. All of the sugar pretty much is melted. It's a little bit um, grainy still, but it's all turned to this beautiful syrup. The apples have softened, and now you can see these little ribbony shards. Um, it's really beautiful with these big, dark purple plums. Now all we're gonna do is bring this up to a simmer. We're gonna put it in our jam pan. As soon as it starts to bubble just a little bit around the edge, we're gonna cut the flame, put it in a bowl, cover it with parchment paper, put it in the refrigerator overnight. Once your jam comes to a full rolling boil, set your timer for five minutes. So as tempting as it is, don't double these recipes. I know when you have a plum tree and you've got 100 pounds of plums just falling onto the ground that you're going to want to make just one big batch and be done with it. But this jam works and this, this jam is beautiful and lively and fresh because it's a small batch jam. So if you try to double or triple this recipe, you're going to throw your set times off. You're going to have to cook the jam so much longer to get all of that moisture evaporated. You're going to ruin your jam. Your apples are going to go to mush. Your color is going to fade. The flavor and the brightness is not going to be there. So if you are interested in making multiple batches, it's best just to stick with the recipe and just repeat the process you know, over the course of a couple days or just one big marathon day of jamming. So my jam is getting close. It's starting to thicken up. You'll notice that the shape and the frequency of the bubbles increases. So the bubbles get bigger as the liquid gets thicker. This is reducing down really nicely. I have maybe a minute to go. I'm gonna go ahead and start um, checking the set. I'm going to do a spoon test. So this time I see wrinkles, it's a lot thicker and it's jammy. It's ready to jar. That's your star anise, vanilla, plum, apple jam. You're gonna love it. And when you can, leave your jars for 24 hours. If you can't have them sitting on your counter, just um, keep them on a tray and very carefully move them to a destination where they can sit and rest. You want enough time for that seal to really adhere to um, that glass jar without the syrup slopping around and maybe working its way in. So happy jamming, happy canning, 
and I hope you are all having a wonderful fall. Harvest season is my favorite. I mean, I say that every season, I think. I love spring, I love summer, I love winter, but I really do love the fall, and I'm so ready for it when it comes. So enjoy, put some stuff up, and um, try your hand at making jam. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.